Yeah. Oh, I don't know when I see a good ball. Okay, maybe you're right. No, don't patronize me. I don't need that. Hi guys, I welcome all of you to my movie review YouTube channel, Miss Fanatic. So today in this video, I am going to review a Jim Carrey 1990s film centered around the theme of television and stocking. So enjoy, The Cable Guy is a 1996 American black comedy, satirical stocking thriller, starring Jim Carrey and Matthew Broderick in leading roles. It is about a very weird and lonely cable guy named Chip with a lisp that is a speech problem. He installs cable for a man named Steve who has just moved to a new apartment after getting splitted with his girlfriend Robin. So, sooner and during Steve with some free cable, Chip swiftly befriends Steve. Until his dark and dangerous psycho-stalking behavior pops up and causing Steve to be wary of him. The film has a very dark tone, with dark humor and comedy, yet it is embellished with some witty satirical elements. A quote from this movie by character Chip Douglas goes like this, Free Cable is an aphrodisiac, Chip, the cable guy, has only one important asset in life, his illegal, but free cable, for his so-called preferred customers. Free cable is the one thing in exchange for everything, which Chip has to offer, to lure people through the freebies. Chip also improves, Steve's love life through free cable. As one of the film's taglines says, there's no such thing, as free cable. So, one thing we can surely say, is that this movie is about, the needs and necessities of human beings. The cable guy, just needed a friend and the people around his life, Steve and all just needed a cable service, just some free cable. But, was the free cable from that lunatic cable guy, was worth all of this? He proves that, anything that comes for free, can surely attract people, but it has its own price to pay, basically proving nothing comes for free, in this world. A quote from this movie by character Chip Douglas goes like this, Funny, how you call when you need something, is that how you treat people? Throughout the film, Chip disturbs, bullies, stalks, harasses, and invades Steve's private life. Steve is a good-natured, mild, and sober man, unaware of Chip's past history, his deeply disturbed persona, and his violent intentions, which aren't very clear. In one scenario, Chip horrifies Steve, by placing him in jail on purpose, and in another, he is playing games like, porno password, while having a wonderful meal, and hanging out with Steve's friends and family. So, what does Chip really want from Steve? Is it friendship? Yes, we can say that, what Chip truly needed from Steve, was a friend, someone to talk to, and one who loves and cares for him. Due to his mother's carelessness, Chip never recovered from his childhood trauma, because all he was ever given was loneliness and rejection. And, because of his mental condition, an antisocial personality disorder, he has been abandoned by both society, and its citizens. A quote from this movie by character Chip Douglas goes like this, You give me something more valuable, Steve, and that is friendship. I can be your best friend, or your enemy, you seem to prefer, the latter. One theme, that goes on throughout the movie is television, yes, the television world, the movie digs deep, into the communication, and the broadcasting world. Chip, along with his residence, his fun bus, actually shows Steve, how the satellite works and how, just by sitting at the leisure of our home, and we grasp the information. Just like Chip, we are also consumed by the TV world. In fact, there was a scene in the film, where a character suddenly, starts reading out a book, lying aside on his table when his cable TV runs out. But for Chip, it's real versus reality. He raised himself through television, so for him, television is his whole world, which has had a greater impact, on his social and personal life. A quote from this movie by the mother of Chip Douglas goes like this, Don't sit so close to that thing, it's going, to rot your brain. Chip uses various fake names, from different movies and TV series, imitating famous characters, like Hannibal Lecter. Chip puts a slice of meat, on his face resembling, the film, Silence of the Lambs, during a dinner with Steve, at Medieval Times restaurant and references many shows, quotes and mimics the dialogues, and gives advice from movies, like Sleepless in Seattle, to improve relationships. As a result, Chip is a character, that offers non-stop entertainment, just like a television program. Side by side, the film examines the negative impact of early fame and success, and obscurity and death 
using the horrifying Sam Sweet murder case of two twin brothers who were former child actors for Hollywood, but after the cancellation of their show, their lives became miserable and one joined a cult, prompting the other to murder his own brother by shooting. This murder case exemplifies the dark side of show business as well as the cost and reality of being a celebrity. As a result, the film thoroughly discusses the entire case with us, making the case's final verdict coincide with the film's long, final ending. However, the huge ending twist never actually tells us what the final verdict of the case is, creating suspense among the audience. A quote from this movie by Steve's friend Rick goes like this, I don't know what your story is, but I'm going to find out. This isn't a movie, this is reality. A quote from this movie by the character Steve. Dialogues are sometimes of a double nature. The cable guy implies that he has a joking nature, but the sarcasm portrayed in the film is really not so funny. Jim Carrey's character is stubborn, deliriously insane, somebody who is really smart with technology and in invading people's privacy, and lastly, someone who needs to be feared out. Disguised with a false identity, he's madly intense, full of suspense, and can also be a threatening sociopath. His traits were the outcome of years of seclusion, solitude, and loneliness. Some of the scenes in the movie drag on for far too long. For example, Chip spoils Steven's dirty football game. The scene feels so stretched, and the entire dinner scene between Steve and Chip at the retro restaurant, medieval times, was with a very long imitation of Star Trek fight and battle scenes. There, Melinda, the waitress, sends Chip a worried look, as though she already knows about his unsettling and bothersome behavior. The dream sequence at the end was highly effective. Plus, the final scene gives a frightful, intense atmosphere to the entire movie, and eventually, all of it comes to a climatic rainy night storm, at Chip's favorite location, the central satellite dish spot. Thank you for watching the movie review of The Cable Guy. So, have you ever watched this movie in your life? And what do you think about the film? Please let us know by sharing a beautiful comment here below. Goodbye. Sure. Uh-huh. I'm fine. Show. What are you trying to prove? <laughs> Mr. Magoo. Now if only somebody had paid him, paid him, paid him, paid him, paid him, paid him. The cable guy. Oh. You set me up. No, I taught you a lesson. I can be your you uh, uh, every cable installer fired in the last four years check out some of these names Maurice slaughter Damn, he really does oh did he say that somebody has to kill the babysitter oh. Out of the <laughs> oh you bet your ass you've been blowing me off wow this guy's really been doing a number on me i told you not